Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, all of the panelists here and all of those that they are listening to us from uh, the public, which we don't see, and uh, they, they are in the, through the internet with us. Uh, we have a very important talk show today. The discussion will focus very much into the context where we are, the overwhelming context around us, the challenges that we are facing, all of us, the European institutions, the member states, the regions. So it is important to see how we can shape the future together, what sort of budget will be the one we are looking to have, which will be relevant and will be able to sort out and help out the uh, countries, the regions as we are today in the context that, as I mentioned, is quite overwhelming for all of us. And one issue that is going to be discussed among the discussions and among of the points we're going to raise together is the place of cohesion policy in all that. For us, cohesion policy, it's a policy for investments. It's the policy with the share management that really shows us the way for involving everybody in partnership together to make sure that the investments are long lasting and relevant on the ground. Now, we want to see how this policy, how these investments, long-term investments with the share management um, issue way of, uh, of working would be uh, placed and in which form and shape in the future uh, revision of the uh, MFF. Uh, I know it's something that's going to happen later, but the discussions have certainly uh, started uh, across the Parliament, across the European Commission and across the member states, the regions we represent. My name is Eleni Mariano. I am the Secretary General of the Conference of Peripheral Maritime Regions and I have with me some very important uh, people and very knowledgeable, that's the, that's the main thing, very knowledgeable on the subject. First uh, of all, uh, Jan Olbricht, MEP. Thank you for hosting us because you are the host of the, of the event. We are in the parliament, we are at your house and you are the member of the budget committee. You have been rapporteur on the MFF, so you are somebody who knows yeah. what he's talking about. So this is uh, very relevant. Lourdes Asseto Montoya, coming from Andalusia, from a region, <laughs> as you said before, but representing here the European Commission, head of the multi-annual financial framework at DG Budget, which is the relevant part of DG Budget to work on the MFF. Alison Hunter, we know you have been working with the region for a long time. You're a senior advisor in the European Policy Center and board member of the uh, think tank. Yeah? And you are very knowledgeable, of course, on the subject of the regions, probably cohesion policy and how, what place can we have in this evolving cohesion policy in uh, the uh, new budgetary context as we see it. And last but not least, he's going to join us in a moment, Andrian Zitelli Ferrari, nice name, nothing to do with the car. Uh, so he is uh, the Director General in Murcia, he deals with European and international affairs. He's also, of course, one who is addressing structural funds and he knows how to implement those. So if we're going to have a, a hands-on experience from a region. Now, my uh, idea is to share some questions between ourselves. We'll try to be punchy and to the point and try to actually have a debate and be interactive rather than have big statements. And I know you, most of you, so you're not a statements, big statements person. So, Jan, the European Parliament is already looking in how the budget would look like. Yeah. The context today is no business as usual. It's even more than ever no business as usual. So. How do you think this EU budget should look like in order to address all these challenges ahead of us with, with multiple funds, with one larger fund, with a long-term perspective, with the crisis management perspective? What yeah. sort of budget are we looking to have to address those challenges? And where do you see our dear cohesion policy sitting in all that? It's a big <laughs> back part of the budget as it is today. So what is your views uh, of that particular subject? Please, Jan. Yes, uh, first of all, thank you for having the possibility to, 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 uh, to participate in the meeting here in the Parliament, uh, uh, which is very uh, uh, lively as you, as you see. But uh, when we speak about budget um, and about the cohesion policy, I'm, I think that I am really uh, not very, very optimistic about the cohesion policy in the future. Why? The, uh, I'm still the rapporteur of MFF, so because we have standing rapporteurs, so I'm responsible for any changes the, from the point of view of the Parliament in, in future. 
Why? Because first of all, the, uh, uh, the, the challenges are very, very serious. One challenge is, of course, the, uh, the different crises which are around us. I mean, the COVID crisis, this is the question of the, um, of the war and the consequences of the war for Ukraine, but also for Europe. Uh, this is the energy crisis, which is also the consequence of this. But at the same time, we have another challenge, which is coming from COVID. It means that <laughs> we, uh, uh, we have the, the, um, uh, the necessary uh, situation of paying back the credit. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, this is very important. The, uh, uh, we should pay back this very famous 750 billion, not From 750, but the, especially the, uh, the, the grants part. Um, but if we want to pay it back, where is the money to pay it back? Either bigger national contribution, I'm doubt about it, or new own resources, which is absolutely necessary from the point of view of the parliament, exactly. or cutting the, cutting the policies. First, uh, for, to, to be cut will be possible the European programs like Horizon, etc. Next will be cohesion. Mm. So the, uh, and it will be the old dream of so-called frugals in country yeah, yeah. who didn't want to have a bigger budget. Because if we don't have national contribution, if we don't have the own resources, new money coming directly to you, we will have to take it from the policies. And cohesion will be in will difficulty. So I think that this set of different challenges will make the whole situation quite difficult. Second element is, I feel, uh, and probably the European Commission can deny it, that uh, more and more what is interesting for the Commission and for the Council is not shared management, but direct management. This is now RRF. Mm. Uh, uh, it means that the uh, Recovery and Resilience um, uh, Fund, which is, which, which is much simpler, much simpler and to control, etc. And step by step, we are leaving this shared management. We are going to the direct management, which is in fact reinforcing the Commission, but also centralizing the funds. Precisely. Centralizing the funds. So uh, uh, now we have the new idea of Repower EU about energy and cutting the links with the Russian energy resources. Again, the direct management. So I am afraid that this, um, uh, 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 this appetite for shared management, which is very, yeah. very impo important because this is about sharing responsibility, sharing money, etc. Uh, shared management is something which uh, allows the local governments, regional governments to, to act very dynamically. There is a fear that we will go in this way, which will be simpler, faster, shorter, but in fact uh, uh, centralizing the money. So just to summarize this first element, I think that what we need is to repeat all the time, cohesion policy is absolutely one of the basic policies of EU. This is the, a, a, a real um, uh, element of uh, European Union construction, shared management. This is what we need, and we cannot use cohesion as reserve. Yes, exactly. As a reserve to, to, to reinforce the other policies, and next to give the possibility to the governments. You want to take money from the cohesion, you are free. But if you take it from the cohesion to another, it's okay, it will be simpler. This is the question of public procurement, etc. So I hope not. But when I observe it here in the Parliament, I, I am really afraid that it will be the direction. Yeah. So we are getting again into this situation, Alison, that we are getting every time, I think, that we are having a discussion on the MFF. Uh, because a lot of times, I think, we consider cohesion policy being a pot of money. We spoke about Repower no. EU. Does Repower EU have money in it? No. Where is it going to take this money? Possibly from the cohesion policy or other existing funds. So. Cohesion policy is yet again in danger. Shared management is complicated. Now, how can cohesion policy evolve to survive? Because we need to evolve. As representatives of regions, we are not saying we need to have it yeah. as such. We can evolve simpler right. policy. The Commission has tried over the past to do a lot of simplification, but it's still complicated. It's still complicated. And the easy fix could be easy, but it's a fix. It's not a long-term intervention and investments that could really include all the partners to make sure that actually on the ground we have long-lasting results. So cohesion policy in the context of the simplicity, in the centralization, what can we do to keep it? How do we help it evolve? Um, thanks, Eleni. E evolve is the word, um, and I think that's exactly what we're all facing. Um, the problem that I see, and I share exactly Jan, Jan's views on this, we're Fears. facing a very difficult time. The cohesion policy community 
tends to react to this rather than to be proactive. And the reaction is often about protecting a pot of money, securing a particular financial envelope. We don't even know what that financial envelope is going to look like because we don't know what a future budget yeah. is going to look like um, for the very reasons that Jan has outlined. So that focus, while of course that's the reality at the end of the day, it is not going to be useful. It's not going to be helpful this time. I want to raise another point though about, and I don't want to talk too much about the technical management of the policy because we need to talk about what's it for. But the idea of centralisation, direct management, shared management, even shared management, which is, I think, rightly, it is at risk now, it's not enough. The mechanisms that we have used with shared management have shown that they have not been sensitive enough for tar targeted investment at the regional level. So we actually do need something that, I dare say, is more complicated this time around in terms of how we ensure the financing becomes directed to the regional level. Now, we've seen with the RRF that hasn't happened. At all. The evidence of that is already quite clear. Mm. And the regions are not happy about that. And I think we run a very, very significant risk if we continue to adopt a model like this or go down that path that we are not only going to make the regions unhappy, we're going to have a massive impact on the EU project because citizens are going to begin to see that this centralisation element is actually not close to them, closer to the EU citizen. Now, there's three things I think that we need to do from a cohesion policy community perspective. The first thing is we need to look at social, territorial and economic cohesion pillars and translate these into security. Security and resilience. This is the name of the game. Cohesion needs to be able to transform to understand what these elements look like for the future agenda. The second part that we need to avoid is that cohesion does not become a response mechanism as it has been during the, the COVID pandemic, yeah. very successfully and very necessarily, I would add. But that's not about long-term investment planning. Yeah, that's a pot of money. Aspect. It's a pot yeah. of money. And if it becomes only this, again, I think we're going to see problems further down the line about this longer-term investment agenda. The third thing, and we haven't talked about this yet, because, but we do talk about it in Brussels and we talk about it in the Council, strategic autonomy. What do we mean by strategic autonomy? What is this, how is this connected to security and resilience and what role should the regions be playing in this in the future? And I think personally, this is the key element that the regions need to be considering in the upcoming debate about the future of cohesion policy. What do we mean by strategic autonomy from a regional perspective, not from a national perspective and not in the Brussels bubble? What does it mean at home? And we need a new agenda and a new narrative about this. Happy to talk more about those, but I'll stop there for now. Yes, yes, we're probably going to come back to all of these aspects, but I wanted to come to you a little bit now. You, we, you, you have heard a bit the situation. I mean, you are on the uh, driving seat of how the budget is being actually managed so far. Uh, we have the principles of the shared management as opposed to the direct management, which gives more power to the Commission, etc., which is simpler, like the, um, the story that we have on the recovery and facility, which hasn't been tested, however, so we have no clue how this will go down in yep. terms of results, whereas the cohesion policy has been there for decades. So we have the results, positive and negative, OK, but we have results, so they've been tested. This policy has been tested. Now, how do you think, with all this, share management, simplification, cohesion policy, pot of money or not pot of money, what sort of investments long-term we can have? The Commission is looking into it, I mean, trying to find solutions. What are the possible sort of scenarios? I don't want to give me secrets of what's going to happen tomorrow, <laughs> but w I'm sure things have been discussed, you know? Some driving elements are there that would give you a little bit of, and give us a little bit of a direction. And as I say, we are already to reform, to work together, to make sure that this happens. But what are the thinking, what are the thoughts? Where, where, where are you driving us? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> we, we are very much starting the journey. Yes, uh, yes, uh, I'm sure. Uh, thinking of, about the next MFF, indeed. Uh, but I think the questions that we're having for the MFF are the same questions that we would be having for cohesion. Yeah. And it's about, first, what do we want to finance with the MFF? Which type of, of, of measures? Okay. Yes. Uh, and I, I think the, the context today brings a number of challenges that are also or will also have to be reflected in the, in the MFF. 
climate change is not going to uh, disappear sure in, in, in 2027. So this will still be a, a, a very strong pillar of the next MFF. And this is also a strong pillar of cohesion policy or the new generation of cohesion policy. So uh, we have also more... Uh, cross-national but also cross-regional challenges, digitalization, digital connection, connectivity. We see with the energy uh, uh, crisis that connectivity is essential. So, uh, uh, and this is something that was there in the previous MFF, but now it's really here. So how, how to react to this cross-border dimension and what we want to do or what we can do too. So, uh, first, you know, I think it's important to decide what do we want to finance with the MFF? and hence also with cohesion. And I do think that cohesion, I'm a bit more optimistic uh, uh, than Jan Ulbrich with, with the future so of... a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Uh, in the sense that for me, cohesion is, you know, it's about fostering convergence or preventing divergence, okay? And there, uh, I do think that cohesion, uh, therefore, uh, I don't see it as a pot of money or the activities that have been financed also via cohesion by, you know, speeding up the use of cohesion policy or helping okay, with... Uh, uh, speeding up the use mm. of cohesion policy for challenges that are new, that were, you know, uh, unexpected, has, have helped and will help in preventing divergence. Uh, and therefore, this is very much at the core of, of cohesion policy and cohesion policy objectives. But having said that, so what do we want to finance? Once we have a decision or an indication of, um, of what we want to finance, then let's look at the size. And I would hope that, you know, in a few years' time, we uh, start looking at the size really at, yeah, as a function of what we want to do and not, you know, as uh, less set a number and then we see what we can fit in into that number so but that's a you know that that's a hope uh, and then we see into how do we want to manage the budget and I, I think the debate about you know share management or direct management only or in isolation I, I don't think it's a constructive one so let's think about what we want to do and, and, and what are the type of flexibilities and now let me put it in terms of questions so what do we want in terms of uh, specific instruments? Do we want to have uh, flexibility across the MFF or do we want to have flexibilities within each uh, policy? We have some examples in this MFF, in the external action, in home funds, we have some embedded flexibility within. Mm. Is this an avenue that we should pursue further, you know, in other funds? Uh, I, I, I don't have an answer, but this is something that we will have to be uh, reflecting upon when, when we look ahead. Uh, in terms of the management modes, you rightly say, okay, cohesion has been there for many years, but it's not the same cohesion. Cohesion has also changed in terms of objectives, in terms of delivery, so there has been change not on the management mode, but on, you know, on, on what cohesion is yeah, doing. So, so I, I wouldn't really plea to see, okay, what has happened or what is going to happen with the, with the RRF, what are the lessons, what are the lessons also of implementation that have not yet started of the new generation of, of cohesion policy and see what is needed. And then also in view of the challenges and flexibility, I think it's really, you know, yeah. the name of the game also thinking ahead and, and what we are witnessing today, it really calls for, for more flexibility. I don't know yet whether within yeah. policies in an all-encompassing manner, but flexibility and how to foster flexibility, you know, it's something that we, we, we need to reflect upon. So I leave those thoughts uh, yeah. uh, on the table so that we can, uh, we can continue to change. Yeah. No, flexibility, it's something we have been talking a lot. Now, in our papers as CPMR, we are speaking about good flexibility and bad flexibility. Probably not a nice way of presenting it, but what do we mean by that? We don't like the flexibility that allows everybody to pickpocket, <laughs> you know, because there is yeah. flexibility, we can get some money here, because there is a pot of money which is available so we can use it. And it's true, sometimes there are unspent funds. And those unspent funds are there, that's why it becomes the notion of a pot of money. So, but that, we need to understand that it happens because the negotiations are late, the, the whole packages is coming late, the whole agreements and the partnership agreement signatures are coming late. So it's not the regions waiting for, you know, it's because the whole thing is complicated. So how do we actually facilitate this complication, avoid this complication? For me, 
so that's the bad flexibility. The good flexibility would be the way we, we mean it, more to help regions help themselves, to help territories help themselves, to make them, you know, to, to allow flexibility so that these people could create resilience on the ground, so that they will be, you know, because cohesion policy has been an educational policy as well. The way we structure the regions, the way we do investments in a way in the regions, you see. So it is that as well which is part of the game. It's not just the money for the regions to do whatever they want, because the member states are involved as well on the cohesion policy. Shared management is with the member states. Uh, so not entirely as they are with the facility, with the recovery facility, but okay. So this is on the flexibility. We can discuss maybe together uh, about what is it that we mean by this flexibility and what sort of evolution we can make, if possible. Maybe that would be helpful for you to also give us some incentive because we are working a lot on that. To, to make it simpler, to make, because we really think the economic and social and territorial cohesion is the way to go, so we need to continue, no matter how many crises we have, this is a core activity for us, but how do we make it in a way, you know, uh, simpler to implement? Because you need a PhD thesis to submit a project <laughs> in cohesion policy. That's what the local authorities are telling me. So they prefer to go for the national funds. So we have a, we have a role, we, we have things to do. Mm. So. Jan, you first. Flexibility and yeah, there are, there are two elements. And simplification. I mean, yeah. One, one is the uh, uh, the question of flexibility in the budget. In general, what you are discussing. So this is the how to make the budget of EU more flexible. Uh, if we have the completely new challenges, we, which we cannot uh, even um, predict, it means that we should have uh, the instruments to react. To react. So th this is the um, yes. this is one element. Is we should have the kind of reserve. We should uh, a bigger reserve. We should have the uh, possibility to change the budget uh, quickly and not not to make it really um, uh, uh, petrified, etc. Mm. So this is the yeah. uh, one thing. We need some kind of flexibility, which was impossible some years ago. Like for yeah. example, the uh, CRE and CRE, CRE one. It's this was exactly this. I mean, money which is not spent normally. It's gone. Now, okay, let's keep it in budget. Yes. We, we will ask as a parliament, okay, let's go back to the idea of the, everything which is decommitted should stay in the budget. Because if, you know, for the Minister of Finance, it's done. I mean, it's, it's done. signed off. Yes, yeah. it's signed off. So, so I think flexibility of the budget is absolutely inevitable because we cannot now prepare the budget which is ready for seven years. I mean, we, we should forget it. I mean, this is not the possibility. Yeah. In terms of the uh, cohesion uh, uh, policy, this is the, I mean, uh, uh, the question is, what is the cohesion policy for? Mm. Uh, this is the, the element. I mean, the cohesion policy, as, it, as you said, this is about the territorial and social cohesion. So we need a kind of investments to keep the cohesion of EU. So to keep the cohesion of you, we should have money, which is especially to this. Of course, the, the different um, disparities or convergence problems, they can change from one day to another because of the climate, because of the energy, etc. So the, we need an instrument which is flexible to react to this. But th this is not, uh, as I said, the, what now the Commission and the Council proposed is make flexible like, let's take it from the co cohesion. I mean, yeah. it, it, I have the whole list. I mean, not, not only because of the war. Horizon. Let's take money from the cohesion to horizon. Okay. And it's not cohesion anymore. This is horizon. Invest EU. Let's take it to invest EU. Let's take it to, to the RRF. Let's take it to the Just Transition Fund. Let's take EU. it to Repower EU. <laughs> Let's take it to the uh, Social Climate, etc. Th this is not the way. Why? We can do it inside the cohesion policy exactly mm. because this is this cohesion policy is prepared to do it mm -hmm. we can we can make it as cohesion policy because it requires the the uh, the the, the uh, involvement of the local and regional policy and the national uh, authority as well you are absolutely right the, we we should have less administrative burden i mean papers documents control so this is i mean quite, quite clear and the Commission is ready to do it. I mean, CRE 1 and CRE, and CRE and CRE 1 was absolutely better. This shows it's possible. If it's possible in the time of crisis, it means that it can work. 
it can work normally. So as you said, more freedom, more flexibility for the final beneficiaries, uh, that they should have the possibility to change, to, to, to correct the programs, etc., etc. Because if not, I, then this is my, uh, uh, as I said, uh, 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 I'm optimistic in terms of new ideas coming from the practice. But in terms of, uh, in terms of long-term planning, I have the uh, problem that uh, probably if we don't um, uh, plan the correct way of working with cohesion policy, European money can centralize the system. So the, our question is, do we want to have decentralized Europe or do we have the Europe which is in, in a way more efficient, quicker, faster? This is typical for the... Fi finance management, etc. Let's make mm. it quicker and efficient. Mm, yeah. No, but our idea is to, to, to make it closer to the people. So we cannot use mon European money to have in consequence the centralization. Yes. So that, because this is, the, uh, uh, this is the way which is... Um, it's a risk for the citizens a risk. as well. And I think they that, don't see and the, the results. Mm. And the Commission should think about, about it, that uh, uh, if we don't control the whole system, it's just by chance, at the end, we will finish with the very centralized uh, situation. So it will not be flexible. Mm -hmm. it, will, it will be much more, I mean, st strict, etc. Mm. So, but there are some, some new signs. So I think that you say flexible, it means flexibility of the budget. I mean, let's make budget more flexible, the whole budget. But let's not forget the, the construction. Mm. We have something which is managed from Brussels, Horizon, etc., and we have something which is managed in co-managed by, by the member states and by the regions. Yes. And we cannot forget it, we, because if we resign from this, the whole, as I, would like, I, would like not, I wouldn't like to repeat what I said before, but we can make it something more efficient, but absolutely, and in consequence, less politically... Sort of inclusive and European, less inclusive. in a way. Yes, so so sure. that's why I think, but there are good examples. And I think to go direct, let's leave regional and local authorities more freedom. Let's make it more open. Let's have the possibility to change the program during the time. Yes, I mean, that type not of to go, Not to go to Brussels and to ask, can we change the program? It will take six months. Yeah. No, let's, let's leave them the possibility. Let, let's give the framework. That's a framework. Of course, let's take something from RRF, from RRF. It means that, okay, you have the plan, you have the framework, okay, do it. And this is, you, you are free to, to change. This is, I think, the situation which is necessary, right. but Excellent. not forget cohesion. Because if we, if we take money from, for example, from cohesion to RRF, it's not cohesion anymore. This is the, in terms of, I think, for the Commission, it's very clear. When you have cohesion policy, you have seven years plus two. If you take the same money to RRF, you don't have seven years plus two. Now you have two. You have to finish mm -hmm. half of 26. Mm -hmm. So someone who, who has the money say, okay, but I'm, I'm losing uh, three or four years. So this is completely different. So it's not the question of transferring money. This is completely changing the method and the policy. So I think it's not flexible. Exactly, it's, less, yeah. it's less flexible. Can, can I just pick up on that point? Yes, it's, 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 it's flexibility yeah. and uh, simplification in a way. Um, the flexibility in the budget, I think that's frankly a nice idea, but I think it's also a pipe dream because we have significant challenges in, dare I use the term, multi-level governance. Yeah. We come back to this problem and capacity combined with a culture which is still drastically towards centralization. So with further flexibility, I think we risk a default of further centralization. So if we really mean flexibility, we have to change very significantly how things work. Now, I think we all know that cohesion policy management within the services is not done ideally. And I think that that's something that has to drastically change mm -hmm. to yeah. reflect so how we can manage the flexibility that we've been talking about. If we really want to make that a reality, if we want to understand what is happening on the ground and to be able to respond, as we have been doing, for example, with the COVID pandemic and its continued fallout, yeah. we cannot just rely on a new financing instrument that then is dispersed into the regions. We have to be able to understand better this flow of continuous information, which means that we need to use better tools like resilience dashboards, the foresighting mechanisms. These tools are now beginning to be um, used 
but they're not actually being adopted or adapted at the local level. So I think that this is a very, very significant technical exercise which is going to be required towards planning for the next programming period if we are really serious about this flexibility and we will need it because if we don't as I say we're back to this centralized game. I also wanted to come back to a point though that, that you made around um, the interregional collaboration element. That has been a massive success story for cohesion policy but it's rather unsung it's still under-acknowledged and under-appreciated largely by the member states. Now, let's be honest, they don't really like it because it's a threat to how they operate. Let, and and let's, let's be honest about how this works. We talk about our member states, our EU27, saying very, very clearly that they want to operate an agenda of open strategic autonomy. Yet they will not talk about open innovation, which is what our regions are talking about. And if we really want to have resilience, security, etc. We need more open innovation. So our member states are going to have to rethink that agenda because our regions are already doing this and trying to find the space to make this work. This is why when I said originally I think the regions have to own, understand and drive the, st the strategic autonomy agenda. This has to be acknowledged at the national level. I think it's actually already acknowledged in Commission, but I don't think it's acknowledged um, at the EU27 in Council. Um, so I've diverged a little bit from the flexibility <laughs> issue, but I, I think that's a really important um, point for cohesion policy's yeah. future and driving yeah. this agenda. Yeah. You wanted to come back on yes, a point. Yes, ju yeah. but just one sentence. We have also this, some kind of an effet pervers. <laughs> this is the, of, of, the, uh, of the situation. Me, as a former mayor of the city, I, I know the, the, very often the, the, this kind of approach that someone said, OK, give me my money. And I will do it what is really necessary. I mean, the, the mayors can do it. Give me my, my money and I will do it. This is not the case. Mm -hmm. This is our common European money. Exactly. Yes. And we have our priorities. Exactly. The question is, the question is what you said, is how we can uh, uh, give the possibility to be in the framework of our priorities. This is not money which is given. Mm -hmm. This is not a bank. This mm -hmm. is not a bankomat. It's yeah. the, this is the, so not a white check. So this is the, <laughs> yes. the, the situation is, okay, you have to understand the priorities, you have to understand the whole, the whole framework, and next you have to be free to move in, inside the framework and not to do whatever you want because it, it's not European money. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I would maybe like yes. to, to respond yeah. to that because indeed it's very much uh, uh, in, in that uh, spirit or in that objective that, uh, you know, that, that the policy will, will find its way in, in seeking uh, synergies or contributing also to the objectives. And they're coming back to the flexibilities or interaction with other policies. I, I, I sense that uh, there can be a, a temptation to say, okay, this is cohesion, this is my, my pot of money. And when we seek interlinkages with other programs, when uh, mm -hmm. a part of cohesion policy can be implemented via InvestEU or there might be a decision, you know, to put part of this money into, into other instruments, I don't take this as necessarily bad. Mm. It is part of delivering of joint objectives and it is a, a choice of seeking complementarities across instruments. So mm. um, getting, we, we risk being entrenched into this is cohesion, this is how yes. we always have been done and this is how we will continue to do. I think on the contrary that uh, uh, there are possibilities to exploit, you know, different modes of implementation, interactions with, uh, with other instruments mm. that can be useful. Mm. Um, on the simplification, um, uh, because indeed there has been a long way gone and, and some things may still be, uh, need to be done in terms of simplification. Uh, I think that the, uh, the going from cost-based to performance-based, this is something that we need to explore with an, with an open mind uh, uh, in, in general. Also, you know, drawing lessons from the RRF. So, so that this is a, an avenue, a potential avenue of, of simplification. Mm -hmm. The other point is how we want to have the money reaching the economy uh, uh, and how to make it quicker. Quickly, is this uh, implementation modes of a, a seven plus two? Uh, uh, how we reach the money on the base of the new priorities? Quickly, into, obviously, there, for a region there is a continuum of, of funding, so this is not felt. But do if we want to implement climate targets and implementing them on the new uh, setting, how do we 
change or interpret or, 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 or shape the rules in a way that allow to get the money on the basis of the priorities that are our shared priorities quickly on the ground. And for me, this is also a reflection in relation yeah. to simplification. Yeah. Yeah. But, this is, but the, yeah, I, I have given you the one example. Recently, we had a meeting with the mayors of big cities of Europe. One of them, I will not quote the name, but one of them uh, said, uh, I would like to make the investment inside RRF. RRF is, of course, the question of, uh, as, as you said, very absolutely correctly, performance base, etc. And he, say, he said, impossible to finish in the half of 26. Impossible. But if the, someone asked me from the Commission, I will tell, of course, I will finish 26. Because if I stay today, that it will be longer, I will not get money. Mm -hmm. Of course, I will not do it. But I, I hope that the, the rules will be changed. It means RRF is for something which is already prepared already almost ready, the pipeline, it's a yeah. the uh, uh, seven years budget is for the longer, longer investments. So I, when you said investment, is it you, if there are new ideas, why not do, doing it inside cohesion? I, I, I agree, don't well, misunderstand. The other way around. So the I, other I, way I'm round. talking yeah. about the, the tools or, or the, the imp implementing ways, not about the time frame that clearly is shorter for the RRF yeah. than from cohesion policy of today and the MFF will have seven years, which we don't have yep. in, in, in the RRF. So it's, it's rather on the implementation mode or, or, or the nature that the constraints that since we mm. have a, a you know, white table <laughs> that mm. where we are drawing the future of the policy, yeah. mm. okay, which are the lessons that we can take and certainly the timing dimension or, or, or the quick delivery to make the money hitting the ground quickly on the base of new priorities and think this is something that we, mm, we, yeah. we need to reflect but, upon. But do you also acknowledge the distance that we are away from achieving that in the sense of what I mentioned earlier about multi-level governance, the, cap the capacity at a local level, the, also the culture that exists at a national level about holding on to the financing and frankly also a culture that exists across European Commission services in terms of how these management models have to work. We have a massive distance to cover if we are to reach something which, uh, which I fully agree with you uh, around this, um, this flexible mechanism of targeting financing, getting it there rapidly. But, but I, I'm just wondering, do you understand? Do you, the, do you the acknowledge capacity, the, 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 the distance? Is a good, uh, it's a very good point uh, that I personally, something that is very close to my heart, yeah. so how to develop capacity uh, in, in general, uh, I mean, at the regional level, also Managing at the central authority. level. So uh, uh, there we, we have the technical uh, support instrument, which is it's small, it's a small, okay, but small. it's a start. Uh, uh, so how in the next MFF, uh, technical support for delivering, for, for fostering uh, uh, capacity can be improved? Mm -hmm. I personally, I think it's something that should be in the, in the drawing board. Mm -hmm. I, either I don't have yet a solution, either in general terms, as we are proposing now, how to foster that uh, in, in, within a specific policies, because by building capacity, you allow quick uh, deployment. That's clear. And I think it's acknowledged by the Commission, you know, with this uh, uh, technical support instrument and maybe something that we, we need to develop further. One, one, no, no, one, no, one, just one a tiny moment. Okay, comment. because yeah. I need to introduce I, I also understand. Andrew. But yeah. one comment. Our Commissioner for Cohesion is also our Commissioner for Reform. And we are not seeing that reform agenda hitting in terms of support and capacity at the regional level. It's very, very much targeted at the national level. So there already, I think, is an issue that we have to address. Yeah. It's good you said it. Otherwise, I would be upset. Anyway, <laughs> no, because it, it's a very good. No, point. and yes, and I wanted to introduce Andrian, yeah, yes. who is going to represent the regions mm -hmm. in the discussion we have here. Andrian, the discussion is focusing a lot about something which is very dear to you. Mm -hmm. We think a place-based approach, which is part of the cohesion policy, it's something which is supportive for the European project. We all said that the cohesion policy is reaching citizens, regions are involved. This multi-level governance that is suffering a little bit because of the nationalization or renationalization that all the other instruments mm -hmm. are actually a, is supporting as a scheme. Yes. The cohesion policy has this shared management involvement of socioeconomic partners of regions, mm -hmm. etc. How do the regions are preparing themselves, how are they are dealing with this place-based approach? And if we are, I mean, and what, because we are speaking also about flexibility mm -hmm. and about simplification. Yes, there yes. have been difficulties in the region with the different, um, you know, because there are a lot of uh, funding streams currently, mm -hmm. landing 
on the desks of the uh, regions With uh, simultaneously <laughs> because you have the, the current period, Correct. the new period, the uh, just transition, the uh, recovery that uh, re mm -hmm. uh, member states are asking you to do. So you have the regions on the ground trying to manage with the different funds that we asked for. I mean, nobody said it's bad because we had the recovery, we had to do things. But we come in a situation where the regions are managing a, a, a variety of instruments of different nature, yes. of different way of functioning. We don't have a single managing authority doing the whole thing. So give us a little bit your, because you're of course a region yes. running those uh, structural exactly. funds and want to continue doing so, but what can we do to make it evolve, make it simpler, and make it efficient to the ground. Well, first of all, sorry for, for the delay. The traffic here in Brussels can be a little bit tricky uh, sometimes. Not sorry. Brussels, sir. <laughs> this is something that uh, <laughs> even though we learn the lesson, uh, we, we keep making the same mistakes. Uh, yes, and, and, and uh, first of all, I would like to continue more or less because I was following on the car, I was following the, the, the debate, I was following <laughs> your interventions. Uh, and it's key the, uh, just to continue on the same line, and then I'm going to answer your question uh, uh, on capacity. Uh, I can give you the, uh, on first hand the situation that my colleagues uh, are having, for example, in my case, in the region of Murcia, we are receiving uh, MFF funds, we are receiving RFF funds, uh, both next generation, cohesion uh, policy funds. We are doing a fantastic work executing the cohesion funds as, as always, but uh, now with the, with the next generation funds, are, uh, we are struggling, and, and we are struggling due to the, to the capacity and to the deadlines that we have to ensure. So uh, we always, uh, um, uh, talking with these colleagues, uh, we know that we are um, working in a new instrument that has been created and that it has been new for all of us, that uh, is something that uh, we couldn't foresee in the situation that has arisen and, and the, the response was fantastic for the, by, by, by the Commission. But at this point, uh, if we are thinking on a second uh, um, RFF, uh, a second stage of the next generation, I think we must learn from uh, the, the things lessons. that we, that, mm -hmm. the lessons that uh, that we have learned over, over the practice and, and, and uh, take advantage of the experience. And in in our case in particular, the situation uh, with the tech, with the technical support is key. Uh, as you were mentioning before, uh, there is an instrument, but. Uh, uh, is, 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 uh, is not sufficient. It's something that we, uh, and we were, you were talking about the flexibility. Uh, we don't want the flexibility to change the, the cohesion and the way that the regions work uh, directly with those funds because we all believe that we have to defend the cohesion policy because that's uh, the way that the funds are managed by the regions and the regions are the ones closer to the citizens. So we need to maintain that, but, uh, uh, but the flexibility should come uh, or the support should come in a way that uh, we can process, as you were saying, all those funds uh, in the most efficient way through the, the, the technical support that can aid, uh, especially the, the regional governments that uh, um, sometimes we don't have so much capacity as, as national governments. And this is something that we, we really uh, believe that is something that we, we, we have to think about in the design of, uh, of the new instrument. Exactly. Okay. So, um, when at some stage, I'm old enough to remember that we used to have this uh, Europe 2020 strategy. We had the strategic approach at the EU level. Remember that? Some of you are younger. But anyway, I mean, we <laughs> have several. Is, yes. That is to say that we all speak about the European project, how the European investments will take place, what are the directions we want to take as part of the European Union. So it's not the mayor of X that wants to make his square with the money from the structural funds. Huh? No, we don't have that. No. We don't have a kind of general direction where do we go. There is no kind of strategic document. We try to have the autonomy. Mm -hmm. We are taking... <coughs> Sometimes we feel like the firefighters. You see, oh, there is a fire here. Oh, there is another fire. There is nothing we can do about it because it's a little bit the context we are living in, mm -hmm. which is a bit uh, fluid. Mm -hmm. But don't we need some sort of direction somehow? And then the funds will follow the direction? Because if you have climate and digitalization, something which is important, and we all believe this is something important, then we need to see what are the funds that would, would be able to raise those kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. And we believe cohesion policy can do that. Do we really need an additional thing for it? I'm not accusing Repower EU. I think it's a good if we can try to repower it with some money so that we can have the possibility to do something which is important for the energy sector, given the complications that we have across the board today. Mm -hmm. So, strategic approach first, funding following the strategic approach, 
simplifying, good simplification in a way of how to do it, and really making it easy for the managing authorities by helping them with this, what you said, this uh, capacity, capacity or uh, making support. sure that it's, it's, it's smooth and taking maybe the good examples from the, uh, from the recovery fund. Because if we made it to be quick and swift, maybe there we have some elements of how to simplify, how to make it easier to reach the ground. Because the obstacles sometimes are just like... Uh, you know, it's a court de compte here, national court de compte there. I don't know how, how many, you know, uh, controls its managing authority have and or so, how many applications they need to do. So there we need to try to make it easier. Mm. And I would like to also discuss your, the, the issue that you mentioned before. What was that? The uh, strategic autonomy. Yeah. How do we sort of take it down yeah. to the ground? Well, yeah. And <clears> we have to finish that before well, we kick well, it Well, I'd like to go back to the point that you made of we're missing a strategic agenda. Yeah. Um, we are missing a strategic one, and my personal view is we're not coming up with one. Now, part of that is because the firefighting phase that we're in now is going to take on and is already taking on a rather semi-permanent semi basis. Um, and I think this is the future that we are signing up for. This is, this is where we are at. That's not brilliant, is it? <laughs> it's, no, it's not brilliant, but it's real. Mm. And this would also indicate, I believe, why we have had virtually no appetite from the EU27, from the council level, of coming up with what a new strategy is because they don't yet know where any of this lands. Now, that is a problem. And it's a problem if you then have to sit under that, how do we finance that? What is our purpose? What is cohesion policy's purpose? But I go back to the narrative of what I mentioned earlier about how does cohesion policy have to reinvent itself in this context of a semi-permanent or even permanent firefighting situation that we find ourselves in. Mm. Yeah. And that's really for the cohesion policy community to think about. The idea of strategic autonomy that I brought into the mix there is about a number of reasons. One, we need to take it out of the Brussels bubble. We need to take it out of the, the capitals and we need to get this agenda understood at the local level. The regions can do that, mm. but they also need to formulate it in a way that is understandable to citizens and that makes sense. And for this, I come back to the points that I made around security and resilience. Thank and you. these, I think, are the issues that whatever shape cohesion policy has to take in the future, it has to have these at its core. Now, you could argue that some of what we're doing already around Green Deal and some of the instruments that we've been using um, in responding to the fallout from the pandemic have been in this direction, but they're not strategic. No. They have been responses. So we need much more to think about this okay. from a strategic dimension. So we have a last word only before I wrap up, because we're going to be kicked out, I think. So your last word, and I'm going to keep you, then you, and then you for the last. Please. Uh, my last word is openness. Openness, uh, because we are in a, you know, in a very complex uh, sure. context, and uh, we this requires that we are all open, you know, to come to the drawing board and design a next MFF and a next uh, uh, cohesion policy that it's fit for purpose yeah, and sure. which follows, you know, what are the the EU strategic objectives or paths that we have, uh, you know, that we will define collectively. So with openness, I think we can, uh, we can make it work. Thank you. Andrian. I'm not going to be so positive maybe, but uh, <laughs> just a word that I think defines the moment that you were telling before, or certainty. Uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and we need to, be, we need to be prepared. We need to um, take in mind that this is going to be a fixed factor from now on. Uh, we have, we have lived with the COVID, we have lived with, uh, uh, with the war. Uh, in Ukraine uh, and, and the cohesion policy uh, it's a, it's a, it has, has been proved as a very good instrument to deal uh, with those uncertainties. But as, as President Chichikostas, uh, Vice President, sorry, <laughs> Vice President Chichikostas told us uh, yesterday, and I, I, I wrote the quote because I, I think it was, it was fantastic, uh, uh, energy management should not become the new normal for cohesion policy. Uh, this is something that I cannot agree more. Uh, There's a long-term policy that, that, that we need to... We need a long-term policy that, um, foreseeing that this, the situation won't be able to, to be clear uh, and that we need to be more resilient. Yeah. Yes, uh, the last word is to be more provocative. Uh, <laughs> I, I was expecting always. that. <laughs> uh, no, no, but I, I, I think that it's very difficult to have the long-term strategy in this situation of uncertainty. Mm. So this is very typical for this situation. So we have to be very clear how to make the instruments 
as good as possible because they should be prepared for different, completely new situations. And I think, as, as you remember, Eleni, we were fighting always for defense cohesion policy, to have more money for cohesion policy. But now we have different situation. We have money for the cohesion policy, and next time we will take it from the cohesion policy. Mm. So the, this is even worse. So we should say this is a very good instrument. The money should be taken from the cohesion policy, but the new ideas should be put into the instrument. Exactly. So I think this is the other way around. So I think that uh, some people in the Commission, in the Council, they, they, they give us the money for cohesion, and next they say, thank you very much, now we propose to take it from the cohesion. And at the end, we will have a very limited money. This is a good instrument. Should be reformed, should be changed, should be adapted to the new situation. Absolutely, yes. It cannot be like 10, 20 years ago. But it still is one of the most important instruments because it can be, not always, but can be the guarantee for this decentralization, meaning more efficient. Exactly. So this is my last word here to wrap a little bit wrap up what we have said. I think we, have, uh, we are in agreement that the cohesion policy has been tested over the years, that needs to be evolved, that should not be considered as a pot of money, yeah. that it's really a policy for the long-term possibilities for regions to evolve and make sure that we have investment possibilities. The strategic pillars of the Union are included in what cohesion policy is doing, so it's, it's good to keep it this way for the long run, because picking money here and there for new instruments is difficult to manage on, this, on, on the ground, and then in the end we are just duplicating, because you can try to coordinate as much as possible, but in the end you duplicate, because you're doing the same principles with different funds. So if we can simplify to that respect, to follow our principles, keep the cohesion policy, evolve it, make it sure that what we try to do is really up to the job and fit for purpose, but not necessarily replacing the old-fashioned for some sort of new, non-tested instruments. I think it's probably good to make sure that take on board Absolutely. the good elements that we have from different instruments in terms of flexibility or use the reserve, as you said, or making sure that we have the possibility to use the unspent money somehow, but really follow the course, follow the course of cohesion policy, because we've been there all together and the partnership, multi-level partnership, it's not a word, it's the way to work together. And that's the only way Europe would be able to see results, long-lasting results, and engage with citizens and project deliverers on the ground. Absolutely. Thank you all so much. I think it's been useful for us, yes. and I hope that also the people that have been watching will find it useful. Thank you very much again, and probably we're going to repeat it huh? <laughs> on a various on soon as whenever you have some more news to tell us. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank, Thank you very you. much.